other thing that I was that basically finance and time prevented us doing with that game was making the sandbox part of the game more and more and more varied and 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 interesting. They originally hoped to have a wider variety of quests, um, each of which could, you know, feed into the other, but no one quest would, had to be required in order to work on the other. So as you played along with quest A, interesting things that would lead you to quest B would pop pop up from from, from, from time to time, and you could then try to go pursue those. Um, instead of the way the game actually ended up being designed, which was one main quest quest line, and then just a variety of very repeatable side a a activities which you could do to build, build, build up the characters for that main quest line. Um, in hindsight, it's probably better that it worked out with just that main quest quest line, because as modern games are showing us, or more modern games at least, Keeping track of all the different quests you're on and where you are and where you need to go to pick them back up again is no small a matter. And players will for, 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 for get, and unless the soft, soft software helps them re, 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 remember, um, those alternate quests will, will tend to get lost in, in, the, in, the, in the noise of, of all of your sand, sandbox gameplay. When that when when that happens and people are not really using the um, gameplay which you've built 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 into the game for, what's the point of building all that gameplay if people aren't going to use it? Um, ultimately, when designing an RPG, I still think that people need to be very conscious of how much of this RPG is going to be a, a theme park style RPG and how much is going to be a sam sam sandbox style. Um, I'm very curious to see what happens with Star Wars The Old Republic because the, the Bioware crowd traditionally has done very theme, theme park style R RPGs, you know, go from point A to point two to, to point B. Now, it may be a very interesting road and there may be a lot of different uh, alternate paths along certain sections of, 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 of that road. But ultimately, they wanted to get you from point A to point two, two to point B. And World of War Warcraft has much that same kind of feel, although uh, the way they have mapped the road, of course, is quite, quite good. Yeah, yeah, uh, different. Um, and the more of a theme park you are, the more difficulty you run with trying to allow groups of players to work to work work together and, and all of that. The more of a sandbox you are, the more you can build in things for varied kinds of groups, varied sizes of groups and all and, and all that. So there's some very interesting game design tra tra trade offs. When Dark Lands we are under in intense pressure to ship the Dar Dark Lands. When it first shipped, um, the company was financially in a very difficult spot. There was the, um, the initial sales of the game in the first month were very, very good. Every month thereafter, the total sales of the game became smaller. The reason for that was the amount of additional sales in the, in the subsequent months was exceeded by the number of games that were being re returned to, to my, my microprose. And the reason why we had negative sales after the first month was the number of bugs. It turns out that there was a major memory leak bug that we very, very, very deep, deep, deep down inside the game it ultimately took six months after shipment to find that memory bug. The nature of the bug was such that when you got down in, into the mines and you got far enough along on the main quest, the chances of the memory leak bug just dis, dis, destroying your game data sufficiently so that it would wreck your game were almost one 100%, i.e. the early versions of the game was literally not possible to finish it. Um, and uh, people, uh, the people found, found, found out about that, 
even faster than faster than we did, uh, <laughs> and as a result, um, you know, sales were always very very poor af after that. Um, the that was the the major thing that put the nail in in our in our coffin because if the sales are 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 poor, no one wants to fund a a, a sequel. Uh, when I was writing the manual, obviously we didn't know know that, so uh, we had various ideas for how we could do C C C C, -C sequels, but um, uh, finances dictated that that was no never, never going to happen. Um, the in fact, because of those weak sales, my microphones never never again really experimented with a with with a with a role a role role playing game. From a technical standpoint, part of our problem in building the game was that because we never built a role-playing game before and never really thought through soft, soft, soft software architecture so sufficiently, we never really realized that the best way to design a role-playing game is around a, a, a database. And so Darklands had no unified data, database in in, in 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 inside of it, running things. If it had a had 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 a, data, a, a database at its core, it would have been a much easier game to build, um, and a much easier game to make ex, ex, expansions for. Um, so that sort of engineering architecture failure failure on our part helped to contribute to the large cost of the game, and. Uh, uh, that in turn to, 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 to contributed uh, to the um, all the programming problems we had, and they and those caused the bugs, and the bugs caused the for, for, for financial fa failure. So it's sort of a cast, 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 cascading series of cause and effect. It's got to be one of the most tragic uh, bugs in CRPG <laughs> history. <laughs> I mean, it's fascinating to think what could have been, you know, as you refined the engine and, and tried all these different uh, settings. Uh, yep. Yes, well, you can, for any given game, you can think of all these cool things you could, you, you could do with it. Um, but uh, in the end, it's what you can do with the game you, 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 you can actually ship, which is, which is what, what, what really counts. I guess this must be what happened to the uh, plans for the Amiga version too, right? Well, the plans for the Amiga version were largely dictated by the failure of the uh, Amiga as a plat plat platform. Um, as you probably noticed in P PC games, it's very difficult to port to a different plat 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 platform unless that platform has a significant minority of the of, of the game audience. You probably need in the vicinity of fifteen to 20, 20, 25 percent of all of, of all of all gamers to make a plat a plat plat platform port and make any kind of sense. If you're down at one percent or two percent or five percent, you know. The the cost of making the port versus the amount of money you can make it, it just doesn't doesn't work at all. And the and the Mac was actually doing better than the, the, the Amiga by the by the by the early nineties. So the Amiga was pretty much doomed. You were the strategy guide for Darklands, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So maybe that'd be a good that'd be a good final question. So what you know for somebody sitting down to play Darklands today, uh, from the master himself, what is the <laughs> what are some really good strategies for uh, beating this game? Well, I think getting the clue book for 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 the game. Uh, I I don't know where where it's available. Someone's going to have have it out on on the internet. If nobody has it on the internet anywhere, I'd be happy to make a copy available to them. But um, getting that clue book will help a great, great deal because it'll give you a lot of ideas about 
how what kind of characters to make for your for your for your for your party, what kind of abilities to worry about, what kind of things not not to not not to worry about. There are a variety of charts and tables you can pour through in order to you know op- optimize things and um, there are various puzzles that are hidden in the later later stages of the of, of the game, and there's a series of uh, hints and ultimately answers to to those puzzles in, in the blue book, which will make it a whole lot easier for you to fight fight your way from from start start to finish. Um, so, if I had one 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 piece of advice would be to get that that help guide, because. Darklands, by modern standards, is very much an, an, an old school game where the player is expected to do a lot of try, 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 trial and error, make their own notes, all that kind of stuff, track which cities have better this and that, and all, and, and all of those other old, old, old school things, which these days are all used to the, to the soft saw, software it, it itself saving and making making available to, to us um, uh, back back then it was hard enough just just to make 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 the game itself making it easy for players to play was something that we hadn't really thought through very very well yet um, so a, I, a, a, a a good hint hint book is an invaluable aid all right anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't covered well, I want to thank thank you thank you very very much for giving 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 me this opportunity to chat with you. I want to apologize to you and everybody else for the fact that I do have something of a a, a stutter and it tends to sh- show up in these, in these kind of interviews. And so I know it makes it a little hard to to listen. Well, that was absolutely my pleasure. I was a uh, yeah. I don't think that you've done a video interview before. Not that I would. Or are there some out there? I don't think so. I think you may, you, 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 you may, you may, may, you may, may be the very first. Um, the game industry is a very interesting in- industry. There are some people who are very good at having a pu- public per- 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 persona and become very, very f- famous. They're very good at sitting in the in the uh, in the in the lim- limelight. There are some people who through a matter of chance or who they've worked with or whatever have, have gotten a lot of pu- 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 public line, line light. But there are a lot of really interesting people in the game industry who, if you work in the industry for a long period of time, you tend to get 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 to to know. And you know that these people are, are really interesting in whatever field they they actually you know were working with, 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 with within the industry. And it is still a small, small industry, but they are not in the public public line, 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 like you don't see interviews or anything of that sort of no, no, about them, but they're still very fast, 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 fascinating characters. characters. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm one of those pe- people or not. We'll, we'll, we'll see after, after, after you pre- 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 present this, I guess. All right. Well, thanks again. It's been been great. I'm sure this will be uh, very fascinating to all of the all the fans. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. I'm so excited thank about my uh, other video about Darklands. I think they'll be even uh, more psyched uh, to hear you talk about it. <laughs> well, thank 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 you very much. All right. Thanks okay. again. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, I would love to hear from you. You can drop me a comment here at YouTube. Or you can visit us at armchairarcade.com. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can buy some games from goodoldgames.com. I've got a special link at the bottom of the episode. If you use that link, then I'll earn a small commission on the games that you purchase. So please consider that. They've got a lot of the games we've covered in previous episodes. I thought I would leave you with a quotation, as I want to do. History is never above the melee. It is not allowed to be neutral, but forced to enlist in every army. (laughs) Quotation there from Alan Nevins. See you guys next week.